The final thing we're going to work with in stereochemistry are fissure projections. And fissure projections are just a different way to represent molecules and their 3D arrangements without using the dash and the wedge notation that we're so used to. So let's take a look at a pair of enantiomers and we're going to convert these to fissure projections. Here's our two enantiomers and what I want you to imagine doing is kind of the same way we did with Newman projections. Think about standing on the left side of this molecule and viewing this in this direction. So you can think about standing there. If you're standing there, your right arm's coming out of the page, your left arm's going into the page. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, except just looking from the other direction. If you're standing on this side, your left arm's coming out and your right arm's going in. So now what you want to do is draw this molecule from this perspective. From this perspective, pointed up is the methyl, pointed down, kind of away from you, is the hydrogen. So these groups, if you're looking in this direction, these two groups are pointed back away from you, the viewer. So let's put those on dashes. And then the fluorine and the chlorine are pointed toward you, the viewer. So we're going to put those on wedges. And on the left side is the fluorine. On the right side is the chlorine. Okay, we can recolor code these. All right, now before we go any further, um, I just want to mention how useful molecular models are when doing Fisher projections. And in fact, I want to show you this molecule as a model and how we're viewing this Fisher projection. Here are two enantiomers and we're focusing on the one on the left and from the front viewpoint we have in the plane the hydrogen and the methyl group the chlorine pointed out towards you, the fluorine pointed away from you. But now envision looking at this from this side. If you're looking at it from this side, we're essentially looking at it like this. When you're viewing this from this side, you can see how the methyl is pointed back away from you, but upwards. The hydrogen is pointed back away from you, but downwards. The fluorine, which is the red atom, that's on the left. The chlorine, which is a green atom, is on the right. So that's just the viewpoint of the Fisher projection. We're going from looking in this direction to looking along this carbon like this. We can now do the same thing with the other enantiomer. Again, from viewing on this other side, still we have the methyl at the top, and that's coming back off of the carbon in the middle, and then coming back going down is the hydrogen. But if you're standing on the other side of the page, now the chlorine 
is on your left and the flooring is on your right both pointed toward you the viewer even from this perspective you can see that these two molecules are mirror images we can do this using the model of the other enantiomer so we're working with this one but we're viewing from this side so viewing from that side if you look at this on that side we have going back away from you vertically the methyl on top the hydrogen on the bottom the chlorine on the left and the fluorine on the right and those two are coming out toward you we're not quite done however because with Fisher projections they follow very strict definitions and you really don't need to draw in these dashes and wedges in fact we can draw these Fisher projections as simple crosses here's our first enantiomer still have our mirror plane and our second enantiomer. When you see a Fisher projection, you automatically know that where there's a cross, that's a chiral center. And there's strict definitions that go along with this. The first is that the horizontal bonds point out towards you. So on this, we have our horizontal bonds we know by definition they point out towards you. A simple mnemonic for this, you know, think about this almost like a bow tie. And a bow tie, if it's on a person, it's horizontal. So that's what the horizontal bonds are. And then the opposite is the case for the vertical bonds. The vertical bonds, by definition, point back. So when you see the Fisher projection, you know all the vertical bonds are pointed backwards. There are a couple of allowed manipulations that you can do with a Fisher projection. The first is a 180 degree rotation. So I can take this molecule and I'm allowed to rotate this 180 degrees so that the methyl comes to the top and the ethyl goes to the bottom. and we get this structure. The reason I'm allowed to do that, that doesn't violate my Fisher projection definition. In the original structure, the methyl and the ethyl, or the verticals, they're pointed back. Even after the rotation, they're st still vertical, and they're still pointed back. The other allowed manipulation that will be frequently useful, we're allowed to rotate any three groups around cyclically while holding one constant. So let's just work with this structure we have here and say I want to hold the methyl group constant. Then I can rotate the other three around. Let's rotate the ethyl to here, the OH to here, the hydrogen to here. And we redraw the molecule. Keep the methyl where it is because we held that constant. But the OH ended up over here on the left. The hydrogen ended up down. And the ethyl group ended up over here on the right. It may at first seem strange that you're able to do that without changing the molecule, but if you build a molecular model of this and you rotate those three groups around, 
you'll find you can do that without changing um, the stereochemistry of the structure at all. But because of the strict rules of the Fisher projections, there are manipulations that are not allowed. The first thing is you can't do a 90 degree rotation. If we take this structure and rotate it 90 degrees, you get this, but because this is a Fisher projection, it has to follow the same definition, meaning the vertical bonds are back, the horizontal bonds are out, and if that's the case, this is the enantiomer of the first one. Also not allowed, you can't do a horizontal or vertical flip. If you flip a Fisher projection vertically or horizontally, that moves the orientation of these groups, which again will make the enantiomer. And then finally, just like any 3D or any molecule at a chiral center, you can't switch two groups. If you switch two groups, you'll get the enantiomer. Finally, let's deal with a slightly more complex molecule where we have more than one chiral center, but we want to turn this into a Fisher projection. Now, just based on looking at this, we know the general form will be, you'll have your, horizontal, or your verticals, we're going to have three crosses to represent three chiral centers. But we have to do some work to get this to where you can actually um, put those groups accurately onto the Fisher projection. So the first thing is, if you have a zigzag structure, you're going to have to convert it into a semi-cyclic type structure. So here's a zigzag. I actually need to rotate both of those bonds upward. So that it's semi-cyclic. The reason for that is, you know, if I'm looking at this from this direction, it doesn't matter which of these carbons I look at, away from me, the viewer, these bonds are pointed away. If you look anywhere along this. And that's what you need for a Fisher projection because those vertical bonds have to be pointed away from you. So that's what we need to do here. Here's our main backbone. Okay, and we need to rotate. I'll do it one step at a time. First, let's rotate this fennel up into the plane. Because as a viewer, basically I'm thinking of looking at this from down here. So I want all of these um, bonds, it's part of the main zigzag, pointed away from me, the viewer. So I'm going to rotate this one up. And when I do that, this whole right portion of the molecule is going to remain unchanged. This fennel is now pointed up, and by doing that 180 degree rotation, that OH gets rotated from the front down into the back. So here's still 
my chain. Now I need to do another rotation for this carbon. So now I'm going to rotate that methyl up. And when I do that, I'm going to keep everything on the left in the same place. I get that methyl pointed up here, but doing that 180 degree rotation moves that bromine from back to out. Okay, as a viewer, I'm still looking here in this direction. I'm about ready to assemble my Fischer projection. I am going to draw in the hydrogens at these chiral centers just to help me keep track of things. Okay, and I'm looking at this so that the phenyl's on the top and the methyl's on the bottom. But that's just the way I chose to look at this to be the top. So if that's the case, I'm laying here under this molecule. The phenyl's up by my head, the methyl's down by my feet. If you're laying on the page like that, your left arm's going into the page, your right arm's coming out of the page. Okay, so here's a molecular model of this. I'm using the silver ball as the phenyl group. Then we have our CH with the OH pointed out towards you. It's the OH here. We have our next CH with the green chlorine pointed back. Our next CH with the bromine, that's the purple ball, that's pointed back, and then our CH3. So what I've done here is, you know, in the first step, I rotated this phenyl group up like that. Okay, and that brought the H out and the OH back. And then I rotated this methyl group up in the second step. And that rotation brought that bromine out to the front. Now you can see how this main chain is in this pseudocyclic form. Why is that useful in terms of the Fischer projection? Well, we're looking at this from the bottom. So think of being down there, laying there looking up at this. If that's the case, and we switch our perspective. In this form, it doesn't matter you know, where you're looking at. If you look along any of these carbons, the vertical bonds are away from you. The horizontal bonds are pointed towards you all the way along. If you look at this. So that's why this fulfills the definition of the Fischer projection because you know, if you look from that bottom side, all of these groups are in the right orientation. So then, to draw the Fischer projection, you just kind of think about, you know, flattening this out. From here, things are fairly straightforward. We just translate this into the Fischer projection. At the top, by my head's a phenyl group. All right, then down here at the very bottom is the CH3. And then I have my three chiral centers, so that's going to be three crosses. And then you just need to line up you know, on this first carbon near the top, the OH is on the left. The chlorine's on the left, on the second carbon. And then the hydrogen is on the left, on the bottom carbon. And then for the right, those are your out groups, because your right arm's pointed out. So on the top carbon, the hydrogen's on the right. The middle carbon, 
the hydrogens on the right, and the bottom carbon, the bromine is on the right. So if you follow this careful procedure, you can get any molecule translated into a correct Fischer projection.